A very good morning. You're watching News 9 with me, Akshita. Uh, first up, the Supreme Court will hear the central government's plea seeking to restrain the Tamil Nadu government from releasing seven convicts in the Rajiv Gandhi assassination case. A bench of Chief Justice P. Sadashivam and Justice Ranjan Gogoi had directed listing of the matter after additional Solicitor General Siddharth Lothria told the court that the state government had no jurisdiction to release the conspirators. The central government has sought the stay of the state government's decision to grant remission to the seven convicts in the Rajiv Gandhi assassination case and communication to that effect by the state chief secretary. Remember, on March 6th, the center told the Supreme Court that the Tamil Nadu government's decision was selective and derogation of the rights of the victims. But it will be interesting to see exactly which way the Supreme Court swings. The last time around, it was a big blow uh, for the Tamil Nadu government as the Supreme Court made it very clear that the government had rushed into the matter, taken a decision in a hurried manner. We will have to wait and watch to see exactly what kind of a decision will take, be taken by the Supreme Court. The centre, of course, will be hoping uh, that it will go their way and that the seven convicts in the Rajiv Gandhi assassination case are not released. Well, it is expected that the plea will be taken up for hearing uh, in uh, some time from now. And, uh, of course, uh, more importantly, uh, the Rajiv Gandhi killers will be watching this very, very carefully. Remember, they got a huge breather when uh, their uh, death sentence was commuted to a lifer. And uh, soon after, it is said that uh, now the Supreme Court may decide to go against releasing them as well. The Supreme Court had earlier, when it made that judgment in January, had clearly stated that it will be up to the state government to decide if the convicts can be released or not. Within a matter of 24 hours, Jayalalitha convened a special cabinet meeting and announced their release. This did not go down too well with the centre and they have gone ahead and challenged it in the legal manner. And that is the exact plea that is being taken up for hearing today. Well, the election season is upon us and politicians are doing all they can to garner as much votes and spread their popularity ahead of the voting. Let's take a look at all the political updates from across the country and the state. Well, facing opposition barbs on the issue of corruption, the Congress party is expected to spell out strong measures to tackle the menace in its manifesto for the 2014 Lok Sabha polls. The poll manifesto will be released by Congress Chief Sonia Gandhi. The manifesto will also reinforce its commitment to welfare measures, reflecting the party's thrust on inclusive development. Sonia Gandhi will release the document at a function at the AICC headquarters at around 1 p.m. in the presence of top party leaders, including Prime Minister Manmohan Singh and party vice president Rahul Gandhi. The party expected to highlight its achievements in bringing in rights-based legislation like right to information, uh, MNRGEA and, of course, uh, uh, food security bill. The manifesto is also likely to have the Rahul Gandhi stamp as he has taken personal interest in framing the document after he held meetings with people from various sections of the society. Well, at any time today we can expect the manifesto to be released by Sonia Gandhi, Prime Minister as well as Rahul Gandhi. It is of course expected to target the youth as well to a greater extent besides going ahead and meting out a populist measures and uh, uh, some sort of freebies and goodies for the farming community as well as the poverty stricken.
and well, the JDS has decided to field former Upper Loka Yukta Chandrasekhar Raya as its candidate for the Mysore Kodagu Lok Sabha constituency. Chandrasekhar Raya had hit the headlines in 2012 when the Karnataka High Court annulled the appointment, causing huge embarrassment to the BJP government led by D.V. Sadananda Gauda. But of course, with this, the JDS are finally finding the candidate that they wanted for the Mysore Kodagu constituency. Remember, this has been one constituency that has been given countless headaches for the JDS. Initially, it was being speculated that Jafar Sharif, who was, uh, uh, I mean, heavy talks were on that he would be joining uh, the JDS, uh, will be given a ticket to contest from the Mysore Kodagu constituency. But soon after, HDK received that fax yesterday from uh, Jafar Sharif claiming that he will not be a part of the JDS, the hunt was on yet again. And now they have zeroed in on former Upaloka Yukta Chandrasekhar Raya. Uh, now, Chandrasekhar Raya is someone who's not new to controversy. He was uh, the Upaloka Yukta way back in 2012, but the Karnataka High Court annulled his appointment, which was a huge embarrassment and made headlines across the country. And now Chandrasekhar Raya is all set to venture into politics and he will be representing JDS in that all important Mysore Kodagu constituency. Considering he's a newbie in politics uh, and uh, today will be the day he will be filing his nomination, his campaign spree will start off now. So is that enough time to go ahead and uh, make uh, an image for himself uh, at a time when we're looking at names like A.H. Vishwanathan and uh, Pratap Simha go ahead and uh, be pitted against him? Former Chief Minister H.D. Kumar Swami will be filing his nomination for the Chikbalapura Lok Sabha constituency today at 12.15 p.m. The inauspicious Rahukala begins at 12.20 and hence H.D.K.'s plan is to file the paper at 12.15 p.m. Meanwhile, elaborate puja preparations have been planned. These include puja at Nandigrama Bogi Nandeshwara Temple and Viranjanaya Temple. A host of prominent politicals, including Mandya MP Ramya, former Labour Minister Bache Gauda, besides Sri Ramalu, the confidant of Reddy Brothers, will be filing their papers today. Ramya, meanwhile, offered special pujas at the Chamundeshwari Temple. But considering, of course, that it is the last day of nominations, we are looking at all the big leaders of every party scurrying to go ahead and file their papers. Uh, of course, uh, we are looking at Ramya, who was expected to file it on the 24th, will be filing it today in a matter of time. As of now, uh, she did visit Mysore at the Chamundeshwari Temple to go ahead and seek the Lord's blessing before she went ahead and filed her papers. Remember, Ramya was uh, rushed to Delhi uh, when the Congress High Command had summoned her uh, on 23rd. 24th, remember, was the day she was supposed to file her nomination. So that was pushed to today. And uh, as it turned out, the Congress High Command had called her in to shoot for an ad campaign for the Congress. Now, besides her, HDK, Bache Gauda, Sri Ramulu and uh, several other leaders, politicians who can uh, change the fortunes of any political party, make or break that particular political party, will be going ahead and filing the nominations today. Well, will the election commission relent on this? The UPA government is waiting and watching as to what the EC will say. With regard to its plans to announce a modest 1.25 rupees per litre reduction in petrol prices. The decision has already got the nod of the union cabinet, but the government is running worried as the EC stepped in and disallowed the hike in natural gas prices. Natural gas prices were all set to go up effective April 1st, but the EC cited the moral code of conduct and spiked the proposal. Now, considering that that did not go in the UPA's favour, the question is, will their plans of uh, natural gas price hike and reduction go down the drain as well? The election uh, commission is expected to take a call on this soon, but the union cabinet is worried as they had approved a reduction in petrol prices and an increase of diesel prices. But will that happen? Well, we'll only have to wait and watch. But considering that the election commission did state that a gas price hike was against the poll code of conduct, in all likelihood, they will stall this measure as well.